Today we're going to take a look at this Model 15 teletype. This is basically a printing data terminal that can communicate over a pair of wires. And it was used extensively for communications from its introduction in 1930 well into the 1960s. Our U.S. military used it in World War II and the Korean War. In fact, this model here is an Army model, and we'll take a more detailed look at that in just a minute. It was present in pretty much every newsroom in the country where a device similar to this was connected to the API Newswire to get the latest breaking news from around the world. Now, when you hear this run in just a minute, you'll recognize it as the sound you heard in the background of pretty much every newscast back in the old days. And it was used extensively for personal and business communication, just millions of messages sent on these, um, for long distance communication that had to be hard copy or printed. This was the only way to do it back in the days before emails, faxes, or overnight deliveries. This machine was built like an absolute tank. It could run 24-7, uh, continuous use, only had to come down periodically for preventive maintenance. And that preventive maintenance was primarily a job of keeping everything oiled. Because first and foremost, this is a mechanical device. There's no active electronics in it at all. Even its use of electricity is fairly limited, and we'll look at that more in an upcoming video where we go into the details of how it works. And for me, a child of the computer age, to think that you could have a reliable printing terminal with no active electronics in it at all is just mind-boggling. There's no transistors, no interface buffers, no digital logic, no UARTs, no processor to control it, none of that. It did it all with uh, mechanical actions and then basically a motor to provide drive and an electromagnet to receive data. Just truly an amazing device to me. And then on top of that, it was all designed with pen and paper. There was no CAD system. You couldn't easily erase and redo things. You couldn't simulate it. You didn't have CNC machines to help make accurate parts or even to make the dies to make accurate parts. Just an amazing age of engineering in my mind. Add to that to the fact that hobbyists like me can restore these here 80, 90 years after they were made and to working condition is another example of how well these were made. And frankly, most of that effort is a matter of getting old gunked up greases and oils out of the machine getting everything lubricated and moving again towards uh, per spec. And once you've achieved that part, there's a good chance this machine is working. And if it's not, you're really close there. You're not much, not much more to do. And most likely all the parts in the machine are the original parts, short of them being lifted or, or gone and you had to go replace them. So again, just a, an amazing job of engineering from uh, back in the 1920s and 30s when this was all designed. All right, so now as I mentioned, this is an army model. If I zoom in here, you can read the name tag here on the front. That's uh, Signal Corps of the U.S. Army. The other giveaway is this uh, green wood bench or uh, metal board. <laughs> this green board that it's on. It's kind of a faded army green uh, box as, as seen uh, better days. This is the base of a chest that was used to transport this device. Over the top of this, the chest would then cover the entire unit and then latches would clamp onto these. And then the chest had a handle on each end where a GI, two GIs could pick this thing up um, and move it around. Now, in that chest, the equipment you see here was about 180 pounds. So not very light, not exactly a laptop, but it gives you an idea what a hunk of metal this thing was. There's a lot of weight. Now, in true army fashion, they hate to uh, bother transporting anything that doesn't have a use. So what they have done is they made the chest the table for this device. So if I scan back, this is actually the chest that you're taking a look at. It's in rough condition. Um, I have it on a dolly because it's too hard for me to move any other way. So the operator would sit here and his legs would go under that, basically inside the chest, and it would serve as the table. And there was actually one other smaller chest that was used as part of the transport of this device um, that would serve as the seat. So basically the chest for transporting this device served as the table and as the chair for that. So the army didn't have to move any extra tables or chairs to support this. I always thought that was kind of neat. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing uh, up and running. I'm gonna take the cover off so we can watch it work. I'm gonna hook it up to a data feed that's sort of like an API news feed that hobbyists still keep alive. This is up on the website, rtty.com. There's hobbyists there that keep uh, radio feeds of news out 
uh, there for all of us hobbyists to pick up and use whenever we want. There's also a broadcast that goes over the internet so that you can pick up the modulated data that way as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do a video cut and get that set up. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the machine and then start the data feed. And then I'm actually going to stop talking for a while and let you just watch this for a few minutes. It's basically mechanical poetry in motion. do it for this video and the next couple of videos we'll go into more detail about how this machine works how it interfaces to the outside world um, give a demo of using this machine as a console device for a uh, vintage computer which would be much newer than this device like uh, maybe on an Altair 8800 or something like that